Hey, Michael Smith, you heard uh, you heard Connor Rogers there talking about our next guest. Not only is he one of the best wide receivers uh, in the Big Ten, one of the best wide receivers in Ohio State history. He's my homeboy. Come on, Garrett. OH. I -O. <laughs> there it is. There it is. There it is. The pro I'm, I'm a lifelong Buckeye, Garrett. So I was trying, I'm trying to keep it cool here, but hey. I'm just go. I'm out. I'm out the box now. I'm out the box now. Hey, no reason uh, to keep you heard, cool, man. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's right. That's right. You know, you heard what uh, Connor Rogers, respected draft analyst, said about you and uh, your playing strength and how you play bigger than your size. You know, this year you had 12 touchdown receptions uh, that doubled the previous year, and I know it was fewer games in a COVID season. But if you had to explain it in, in a sentence or two or a concept or two, what, what made you better in 2021 compared to 2020? Yeah, um, you know, I'm, I wanted to take a different mindset into the off season this uh, after my sophomore year after that Corona season. And, um, you know, it was, a, it was a different season. You know, it was, it was kind of hard to get your groove, not knowing you know, what was going to happen week to week. And uh, going back to normal this past season was, was, I mean, a blessing. You know, you kind of took that for granted and didn't realize what it was like having fans there. And, um, you know, I want to take that different approach. And I feel like, you know, I, I saw it pay off, you know, on Saturdays, you know, I wasn't able to stay healthy all season. But, um, you know, I felt like I put good film, good film out and felt good about what I was able to do. You know, it's interesting when you talk about some of these uh, Ohio State wide receivers in a draft. So it's you projected first rounder. See Chris Olave projected first rounder and over the years. I mean, a lot, a lot of talented Ohio State wide receivers who've been in the NFL. And it's funny, I don't know if you look at some of the pictures around the facility there, going back old school, Woody Hayes was a the coach. They talked about three yards and a cloud of dust, and Archie Griffin was the featured guy. I mean, I, I, let's, let's, just, let's be real here. Do you think you could have played, you would have wanted to play at Ohio State in that era? It's become a passing school, and it was always known as a running school. Yeah, I mean, um, you know, to be honest with you, I, I saw what Coach Day was doing with the offense, and and um, like you know, I was I was able to come up when Dwayne Haskins, you know, rest in peace, Dwayne Haskins, and um, and Joe Burrow was were battling out for the starting job. I think I was a junior going into my senior year in high school, and um, I saw what they were doing with the offense. And, you know, that played a huge impact in me wanting to come up to Ohio State. You know, I wanted to be a part of a, an offense that I felt like you know receivers were featured, and you know, I had never seen that at Ohio State, and that was just. You know, something that I believe in Coach Day and what he, his mindset and what he wanted to do. And, um, you know, so did my family. And, you know, I'd be lying if I said that throwing the ball wasn't a, something I was looking for in, in my recruitment. Hey, Garrett, uh, and, and you're here on behalf of Old Spice, obviously. Um, you just referenced the late Dwayne Haskins. Uh, as a Ohio State family, as a Buckeye family, um, and we saw you guys honored him uh, at the spring game, uh, just the other day. How are you guys processing and, and, and dealing with your grief as a family with the loss of uh, of such a popular player in Dwayne Haskins? Yeah, you know, it, it's definitely been really hard and, and, I, and, I, and I, never, I never played with him, but uh, you know, just the impact he had on me and knowing that I didn't play with him and he still, you know, wanted to reach out to me and when I committed to the school and still, you know, always cheered me on throughout my career at Ohio State, you know, it meant a whole lot to me. You know? You know, he was someone that I looked up to, and I, you know, I talked to people like Chris who, who had the opportunity to play with him. And um, you know, what we keep on thinking about is the impact he did have and how special his life, his life was, and what he was able to accomplish while he, while he was alive. And um, you know, that kind of keeps uh, you know me in good spirit about it. You know, he was able to accomplish so much. You know, he changed Ohio State football as I knew it, and um, you know, just uh, his his energy and. And his, uh, his impact he left on people, it, it was really special. And uh, you know, I'm just really sad that, you know, he's not here anymore. Back to uh, just the, the tradition and the competition. I saw, I saw a mock draft that's got, in any particular order, you, Chris Olave, and Jamison Williams all going back to back to back. That could, that could potentially happen. You guys should all yeah. go in the first round. Same wide receiver room, all three of y'all potentially in the first round. But Michael talked about the tradition there of, of really every position, but wide receivers most recently in particular. How did the competition and the tradition of Ohio State wide receivers bring out the best in you, Garrett Wilson? Yeah, I mean, it, it forces it forces you to tap into that level where um, 
you know, you're 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 pushing yourself to limits that you know you you kind of have to because if you don't, you know, the person behind you is better than you. And um, you know, being at a place like Ohio State, I feel like you can't you can't really find that everywhere. You go. You, some places, you know, the best player can kind of can kind of coast, but uh, you know, being at Ohio State these past three years, you know, every year that you know I spent there, another another dog was coming in behind me. And had a mindset to where I was like, oh yeah, let me, let me learn something from him, and let me take something from his game, and add it to my game, and um, let me not let it you know go work out by himself, you know, because why why would why would a freshman do that? You know, I'm speaking on Marvin Harrison Jr. right now, like this dude, this dude is a is an animal, like he goes all day. And, um, you know, I just know that he changed my whole mindset on, on you know, what a work ethic was. And, like, and like you know, he kept me on my toes. He forced me to to really tap into my to my uh, ability and try to push to, you know, be better at the things I wasn't, you weren't my strength. You know, let me ask you a question. I, I, I know, uh, I know flukes sometimes happen in sports. You know that uh, more than anybody, you know, you, you can see you operated at a consistently high level and every now and then, you know, flukes happen like this year, Michigan, you know, messed around and won a game against Ohio State. They acted like they they acted like they won a national championship after they, they beat Ohio State for the first time. What was it 30 years, 20 years anyway? But let me ask you this. This is what the old school people used to say back when it was a different college football system before the college football playoff. If Ohio State or, or, or somebody else got in besides Ohio State, people would say things like, well, I'm rooting for the conference. I'm rooting for the Big Ten. So when you saw Michigan in the college football playoff, let's be real here, because I wasn't rooting for them. I wanted them to lose. When you saw Michigan in the college football playoff, were you rooting for Michigan or rooting against them? Yeah, no, there is no root for Michigan. So I right, root for that team up north. Excuse me. Uh, yeah, I mean it's really that simple. No, I was not rooting for Michigan. How'd they, how'd they, how'd they mess around and, and, and win that game? You ever think about it? Like, come on, how'd, yeah, they, how'd, they, I, how'd they beat you guys? You... No, they had, they had a really good, good game plan. And, um, you know, we came out and we weren't ready to play. Um, you know, you can, you can watch our first offensive drive. You know, we, we look discombobulated. We look like we're letting the, uh, the moment be bigger than us. And, you know, that, that wasn't us to that point, but, you know, we played on did some uncharacteristic things that game. And, um, you know, when you do that against good teams, you're going to lose. And um, that was an example of that. You're a dope wide receiver, Gary, but as I understand it, basketball is your favorite sport. Uh, your dad hooped at Davidson and with the Denver Nuggets, you had D1 scholarship offers coming out of high school. Well, before we get to just how that translates to the football field, put on your analyst hat. What you think of these crazy playoffs? I know you locked into the NBA playoffs. Yeah, so I mean, um, I'm shocked by, by Brooklyn going down, you know, and losing in the first round and getting sweep. So, you know, I probably would have had them at least get into the finals, you know, something like that. But uh, to see them lose to the Boston, you know, 4 0, I'm definitely, you know, shocked by that. But I mean, you know, basketball, NBA basketball, it's just hard to judge. You know, you watch the whole regular season and it's hard to get a grip on, on you know, who's really that team because the regular season ain't as important, you know. So um, I definitely watch a whole lot of ball and, and I've been keeping track of it, you know, when I can just uh, throughout this draft process. So how are you taking those basketball skills and applying it uh, when it comes to contested catches and your catch radius? All the things that the scouting reports say that you excel at. Is that that is that that D1 basketball player? Is that is that is that from you getting yeah. that from pops? Yeah, I mean, I give I give basketball a lot of credit for my um, ability. You know, I feel like, um, you know, some of those catches I make the reason why I do go up and do them without thinking about it too much is because of basketball. You know, I, I was, uh, I mean, I, I would play basketball at kind of a high level since like second, second, first grade. So, um, you know, traveling, playing AAU and, and uh, you know, one foot jumps, all those jump stops, you know, all that stuff, you know, crossover, that stuff all translates to the football field and um, grabbing a rebound. And, uh, you know, I try to, I try to keep that same mindset as, you know, going and attacking the ball, all that, you know, even when I'm on the football field. So, hey, Garrett, my, my last question for you is this. What, what's your what's your plan for Vegas draft plan? Who's going to be there? You got the you got the outfit picked out. Yeah. What, what, what's the uh, what's the strategy going to be? Yeah, so I, I do have an outfit picked out. Um, you know, it's a little out of the box. So I'm excited. I'm excited for, for you know, for y'all to see. But, um, you know, I'm feeling good about my outfit. And then obviously, you know, my whole family seven is going to be there. So. You know my three older brothers and my one my one younger sister, uh, my parents. Uh, 
two of my friends from back home in Lake Travis that are in college now, and then my girlfriend as well. So, you know, it'll be a special week, and, you know, I'll have the right people around me for it. All right, we know you're going to be smelling good thanks to Old Spice. But oh, yeah, when it okay. comes to the, the, the Ohio State family that's going to be represented, Jamison Williams, but Chris, uh, but Chris Olave in particular, what's that relationship like? What's this process been like for the two of you? Because you're constantly mentioned in the same breath, you know, as, yeah. you know or compared to each other either. You're even, you know, Chris Olave versus Garrett Wilson. Who's better? Who does this? Who does that? Who goes first? This, that, and the other. Just what do you think about being connected to Chris as you guys go into your NFL journeys? Yeah, I mean, um, you know, we we played together for these last for these last three years, and it's been it's been like it's been amazing. Like, like we were we were so thankful to be able to play with each other for for our reasons, and we also like know that we like we took away you know touchdowns and stats from each other just because like uh, you know that's that's how it had to be. We were trying to win as many games as possible, and. Um, Chris is such a great talent, great person too, most importantly, and uh, you know, throughout this process, I feel like our relationship has only grown. You know, we've, we've had a lot of uh, things to talk about, you know, kind of bounce ideas off of each other, you know, being on the other side of college and, um, you know, travel together. Actually, we did, actually did a few of our, our visits together as well. So, you know, we spent a lot of time, a lot of time together, you know, talking about different things and just, you know, talking about where we, where we hope we end up or where we might end up um, doing like, you know, uh, what is this scenarios, excuse me. And, uh, you know, different things like that. You know, me and Chris have a great relationship. It's only grown. And as far as having my name connected, you know, I feel like me and him don't buy into that. You know, we just boys. We got, a, we got a lot of love for each other, and we just want to see each other succeed. So, uh, you know, that's kind of more for the fan. And, you know, me and Chris, we are our own, we're our own people. You know, we played out at Ohio State together, and, we, you know, we're just real good friends. And that's, um, that's kind of what it is. Well, we know iron sharpens iron, whether it's that wide receiver room or it's even the cornerbacks that you go against in practice every day, let alone the competition that you guys are facing on Saturdays. So you're definitely ready for the NFL. Garrett Wilson, we appreciate you, man. And if nothing else, thank you, thank you for making Michael Holly's 2022. There it is. You're the first Buckeye we've is. talked to in, in quite a while. So yeah, <laughs> yeah, awesome. I'll, I'll, I'll be following you. Next level. I'll be following <laughs> you no so matter much. where you wind up. Appreciate it. <laughs> thank thank y'all for having me. Hey, thanks for watching Brother from Another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave and be sure to watch us 3 to 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Peacock. Appreciate you.